Blow Up is a masterpiece to me. Reality and illusion. Yeah. I don't know that it's ever been handled better. This is a mystery story, a great mystery story without a solution. But the journey, the search for an answer, which doesn't end with the film, but goes on long after the film is over, is fascinating. This photographer, a guy who's dealing in Images. living imagery um, that he sees and experiences. He's not even creating his photography. He's recording certain things, like you see these miners that he has photographed at the beginning. And he's looking for one image to end this book of photographs. And he thinks it's the image of two lovers in the park. Right. And it turns out to be an image of murder. I mean, that's an insanely that's wonderful yes. concept. This is a film made by a great director, Antonioni, who had a vision of his own. His earliest films were very controversial and popular only really in Europe with a limited audience in the United States. But Blow Up was his first English language film. It was made in England, and a part of what he was trying to capture was the swinging 60s right. of London, which I think is captured in Blow Up more than in any film I, that, that I could name. The plot is so elusive, so original, so unique, that it will make you wonder about what is real, and what is fantasy, which I think is the essence of what happened in the 1960s to an entire generation around the world. Young people, because of the drug culture, which is portrayed in this film to a small extent, young people had separated themselves from reality. And that's what Blow Up deals with in such a beautifully photographed and mysterious way. I love it. By the end, this photographer whose life and his work is being able to see uh, is completely lost right. in a world of what is real and what is not. Right. I, uh, one of the great shots that I, I can remember in my years of watching films is when Hemmings picks up the invisible tennis ball and throws it back to the tennis court where right. the hippies are playing without, tennis without a ball right. or rackets. Yeah. And he's bought totally into the fantasy. Right up there is the ending of Blow Up when he throws back the invisible tennis ball. That, to me, is a profound moment. He has lost his grip on reality by trying to find the, the clue to an image, which I don't know that he ever really finds. You know, It looks like there's a gun pointing out of the bushes. I'm not sure it really is, or it's his illusion. Antonioni, by the way, I'd like to point this out to your viewers. He never repeated a shot. Like, when most of you see a, a film or a television show today, you guys can pretty much tell what the next shot is going to be. If there's a shot of me, the next shot will probably be a shot of Robert. Uh, in a film, it might be over my shoulder, over your shoulder, and the directors cut back and forth using the same setups. Antonioni never repeated a shot. His films move almost laterally, like a novel, like reading a novel from left to right. And that's in all of his films. Um, occasionally, there might be a fragment of a prior setup used, but they can be counted on the fingers of one hand. So he had a unique way of storytelling. Mm -hmm. I try to do that now myself. I'm not totally successful in being able to do that. But Antonioni could envision a film like a series of individual photographs. And his films uh, move along at a, at a very unusual pace because they never go back from point B to point A. Yeah, it's something to keep in mind while you become yes. immersed yes. in this incredibly simple Mystery. and complex film.